Hey guys, in this video, we're going to look at how to create long shadow text effect. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to bring a Fusion Composition clip to the Fusion page. And we're going to start by bringing a text node to the node editor and connecting it to Media Out 1. Here, I'm just going to write the text real quick, change the font, and I'm also going to bring up the size a little bit here as well. And once all that is done, the next thing we will do is to copy paste our text node here. This will create a new text node connected to it via a merge node. Now let's go ahead and work on the background text node, which is the one that we just did. Uh, and we're going to bring a duplicate node, which we can find under effect. So let's go ahead and bring that in and connect it to the background text node. Now here we're going to adjust a couple parameters. We're going to adjust the copies and the center parameter. Now, depending on how big you want the shadow to look, I'm going to stick with um, 50 copies for now. So let's go ahead and do that. And once that is done, let's go ahead and change the center parameter. Now, this is what's going to really give us that long shadow look. And if you want more precise change here, you can hold on the command key and make your adjustment. This will allow you to make changes of much smaller increments. So um, once all that is done, uh, the next thing we will do is just to come back to the background text node and change the color of the text so that it's not the same color as the foreground. So now uh, this is uh, looking a lot better. Now, as I mentioned earlier, depending on how big you want a shadow to look, the number of copies can make a difference here. So if we come to our duplicate right now and start to adjust the center parameter only and stretch the long shadow, you're going to see that the longer we stretch this, the less natural it's going to look. We're going to get all these rough lines and jagged edges. It just doesn't look very good. So if your goal is to create a long and really long shadow, then what we're going to do is to actually bump up the number of copies first. So let's go ahead and bump it up to, let's say, 400. Now we're going to get an instantly better looking long shadow, like a super long shadow. And then we can change our center parameters until we get to our desired look. But the takeaway is that the number of copies is going to determine to a large extent what kind of shadow we can create. And lastly, let's just go ahead and finish our look here by bringing a background node and connect it to merge one. Now, the first thing we will do is come to merge two and then swap the input so that we can actually see our uh, text here. So once that is done, let's go ahead and change the background uh, to a lighter color here. I'm just going to go with a light blue. Uh, this will finish off this entire effect. And this is pretty much it, guys. Now, to take this effect up a notch, what we can do is to animate it. So let's go ahead and come to the duplicate node first. And here, let's go ahead and select our first frame and then keyframe the center parameter here. And then let's select our second frame and keyframe the center parameter again. Now, let's come to the first keyframe here. And what we're going to do is just to bring everything back to the original setting. And now uh, immediately we're going to see that we have a, a shadow animation going on right now. And if you want it to look like it's the foreground text moving, then what we can do is to bring a transform node in between merge one and merge two. And then once again, we're going to go ahead and find our first frame here and then uh, keyframe the center parameter and then find our second frame keyframe again. And now here at the second keyframe, we're going to move this entire effect, this entire text a little over to the left and then move it up a little bit uh, as well. So now this is going to give us the illusion that it's the foreground text moving rather than just the shadow moving. So it's a little bit more dynamic uh, this way. Now, lastly, to finish off this animation, we can also uh, change the movement of our effect here as well. And we're going to do that by bringing up the spline editor. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Now, uh, here in the spline editor, we're going to select both duplicate as well as the transform node. And let's select all our keyframes and now hit the F key. Now, the first thing we're going to do is to select our second uh, keyframe here and then hit Control T. This is going to bring up easing and ease out. And we're going to bring the easing pretty much all the way to the left. So now this is going to give us the look where it's going to start off pretty quick and then it's going to gradually uh, slow down towards the end. So now this is looking a lot better. OK, guys, so this is pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope it helps and uh, I will see you next time.